school, baby. It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too not familiar. It's a new craze. Hey, good girls, do you want to just say, hey, I want to just say, hey, I want to. That was John Roderick. And thank you. Hey, do you want, hey, John, can you come out for just one second? You don't have to say anything, but I just, Griffin, if you could just say it to him in person. I want to say thank you. <laughs> to John Roderick and the Long Winter Shoes or theme songs to the Bar Trophy on Play Today's Spread. John flew all the way to Seattle. So honored. I just to play that song. For the folks uh, listening at home. Justin. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, my brother, okay. my brother, me, and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. If we don't do it, we'll right. forget. I'm your middle is brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30, media luminary, Griffin McElroy. For, for the folks listening at home, um, Justin and Travis and I just spent about 30 seconds shredding air guitars next to John as if we were showing him this is the, this <laughs> like is the this. correct way to rock. And for those of you at home, we fucking nailed we it. We got it, good. Um, all right, all right, we were at the, uh, Travis and I and our, our families. Our brood. Our brood. We're at the, yeah, uh, I was, uh, You weird. were invited. We were at the Salish Lodge and Spa in Snoqualmie, Washington. Which no, is we our, were in the Great Northern in Twin Peaks. Right. Obviously, that's part of the history of this place, but it is also, like, very good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's also, and you can tell that the people there have this attitude of, like, Yes, it was into a piece. It also smells nice. Yeah. And is clean. And is constantly playing spa music. Yeah, it's like very spa. It's like there's nice things. And it's, we just want to emphasize this, not spooky. Yeah. <laughs> they really go out of their way. When you check in, they say, here's your keys and no ghosts. Just no just ghosts. No, don't and worry you'll about notice it. that key isn't a weird spirit key. It's just, just a card. A card. Now, everything that happens beyond the threshold of this building, if you see the tree wizard, it's been a long time since I've watched Twin Peaks. I wanted to say that they do lean into it in weird ways. There was, um, you know, the coffee that they have, like, this is how fucking fancy this place was. Pour over. Thank Pour you. Pour over coffee. Thank you. Don't or maybe we've just said that to everyone who lives in Seattle and they're like, there's another kind? Uh... On the bag, it said, <laughs> Twin Peaks Coffee. <laughs> Good start. Twin Peaks Coffee, dark and mysterious. And then it said, the beans are not what they seem. That's, okay, that's good. Twin Peaks already had a coffee thing. That more one had that? a coffee they think more than I'm going to drink this. So why don't you tell me what they are? They put beans in quotes. Beans in quotes. The beans. I was like, mm, the beans. I'm going to put this in my body. Yeah, I'm going to put it in my body. Are they, they're beans, right? They're beans, though, right? You ain't fucking with We're me. We're having fun here, but they're beans, aren't they? Okay. 
Um, while you all were doing that this morning, I was uh, flying here at a very early time, and uh, I saw uh, an even better thing than the great, beautiful, majestic waterfall you all saw, which is the dude in front of me pull out the like entertainment screen, like literally throws his bag up overhead, sits down, rips out the entertainment screen, and starts frantically searching, and he, <laughs> he finds Geostorm, and he's like, yes, 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 Geostorm, fuck yes. Yes, they have it! They have Geostorm! <laughs> they were funny. And it was the star of Geostorm. <laughs> Fucking crazy for Geostorm. <laughs> that was so funny. It was, it was. I just enjoyed it a lot. Oh, he, man. Almost as much as this dude enjoyed Geostorm, which was a great deal. I watched over a lady's shoulder. It's, isn't it the best being able to like see what people are doing? Oh, on yeah, airplanes? for sure. I watched over a lady's shoulder, and she watched the Mr. Rogers documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Yeah. At 4X speed. <laughs> yes! I want to find out what the hubbub is on this fool. I ain't going to spend a lot of time. It's just. I, I watched a dude watch Rampage. And when he got to the point where the big monkey started fighting the big reptile, started fighting the big wolf, fast forwarded. <laughs> Too scary. Too scary. Like, I get it. I get it. Boop, 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 boop. Are there two like when it was literally all done and the rock was quipping and he was like, "Play," and I was like, "Wait, hold on. Why are you watching this film?" Uh, so this is time for their podcast. Uh, my mom commissioned and paid for a four foot wide artist rendering of a nude portrait of herself. <laughs> and now it's hanging on the wall in her actual home where she lives. I'm about to move back to my hometown so I'll be in geographic proximity to this abomination. Is there any way I can get away with destroying it? How can I convince her this is wrong? And that's from Annie. Annie, are you okay? <laughs> Annie, are you here? Okay, right. hi, Annie. I want you to know, I, I hadn't thought of it before this moment, but it might be the greatest power move I've ever heard in my yeah. entire life. That, like, especially if you have someone else open the front door and then your mom's standing underneath it like this. <laughs> like the, the, the Peter Pan pose. Yeah. Or, yeah. Especially What's if you, wrong? Especially if you have uh, Airbnb plans for, for your... That's a, that's a big move. What's that? Second cousin Deborah I haven't talked to in forever. You want to stay at my home for two weeks rent-free? You got it! I guess what Travis is trying to say is, Annie, why are you so threatened by your incredible, powerful, sexual mom? <laughs> your mom has power, and she's owning it. Yes. Like a great mom should. And is it... Let me just ask this, and this is rhetorical, Annie, because, of course, this is in the eye of the beholder, but what if it's a good painting? Yeah. <laughs> Have you... Looks upon yeah, it with looked your at human it a eye? lot to check for brushwork and stuff. Maybe it's a good. great, great nude painting of your mom. You know what? Justin has made a good point because every nude painting of a subject throughout time has been a nude painting of someone's mom. That's, and I bet that's not that that's what you just what said. What you just said is fucking is complete fucking nonsense. Makes no sense. What you sense. just said was complete. Dookie that was literal stuff. nonsense. They can't make no, it up. No, stop for a second. It's okay. But think, like, think, think about what you're saying. Think, bud. bud. Think about what you're saying, think. bud. There are new portraits of Jesus' mom and everyone's okay with it. No, bud. bud. Bud, that's not what you said, bud. Bud, you said every new portrait is someone's mom, bud. I said bud. of a subject. I did say of, of a, a subject. subject. You did. I thought about yeah, it as, as I was saying it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. as a subject. What I need to know is why is your brother a garbage person? Yeah. I said it. I was right. I thought. About it. There is a possibility that this is all okay because all that we know is that it's a four foot wide portrait. Maybe it's just one inch tall. Yeah. <laughs> it, is it only catches the belly button. Yeah. Please enjoy this magic eye painting of my naked mom. <laughs> Cross your eyes appropriately to enjoy. If oh, you wait, hold on. Were you saying it's 
full, squished down. No, I'm saying that not every subject in a nude painting is somebody's mom. I don't understand why you're so strong. Based off of somebody. Okay. Sure. If you put your nose on this strip of painting, <laughs> you can kind of see just like wicked tall, it's but like, from the it's side. It's like it's the witness. If you stand on the stairs, then the one painting over here and the other one line up to yeah. make a naked picture of my mom. How? Uh, don't destroy it. It's uh, art. Art. Here. Obviously, it's you art. Should it. You should buy it. You should buy it. Here's a Yahoo that was sent in by... Do you all want a Yahoo? This one was sent in by Ramey. Thank you, Ramey. It's Yahoo Answers user Jonathan, who has negative five points this week. Oh, no! He's been a member since... Make it worse than not answering. He's been a member since July 6th, 2015. He has eight points, and he lost five this week. Jonathan's having a tough tough time with his Yahoo career. Uh, Jonathan asks, no dress code funeral? I am going to a funeral on Tuesday and the family have said there is no dress code. Wear something that the deceased would have liked. I'm a 19-year-old male. What shall I wear? This is how I'm going to go. This is how I'm going to go. Wear whatever. Toss your, toss your peanut shells on the floor. No rules, just right. The people working at the funeral home are going to, like, say, like, shitty things about you, like you're at Dick's Last Resort. It's going to be fucking hysterical. <laughs> put a big, like, time. condom hat on you. Yeah. Put I love a- it. This is, tr- like, if you think about it, like, why, you would think that if we were truly respecting the dead, that the dress code would be, like, as comfortable as possible. Because, like, if I'm dead, I think I'm the most comfortable, and I would like you to match. It's true. <laughs> and now, listen. As good as a choice of this was for a live show to talk about death extensively, which uh-huh. I'm loving. ba da ba 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 I'm loving it. Uh-huh. I wanna, do want to get back to Griffin's point of there aren't any rules at a funeral, and I feel like nobody's going to know how to act. I feel like it might get kind of silly at the, at the funeral. Kind of maybe. The one thing I'm worried about, and I'm sure you've already guessed it, is pranks. That's the problem with no dress code is it makes people feel like so is this a prank encouraged environment mm. or they didn't send out any rules about pranks and I feel like it kind of left the door open. Man, let's bail. <laughs> let's bail. Let's get out of this question. No, it's good. I'm, I'm, I do want to read this comment from my favorite Lucy who said, you said the family said where something de- the deceased would have liked. You have told us nothing about the deceased. So how the hell are we supposed to know? <laughs> Nineteen, you sound eight. Whoa! Their their friend just died. (laughs) This is actually a much deeper question: is who's to judge that the deceased would like? Yeah. Like, is it like wear something that maybe finally will get like that's oh that they've got a Ouija board set up? No, no, no. 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 Yes. 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 Love it. That's how they decide who gets in. Is the guy to bounce her at the door with a Ouija board? Uh, here's another question. Our neighbor built his kiddo a treehouse over the summer. It's very nice. It has a spiral staircase, cedar siding, a flat screen TV, its own Wi-Fi network, couches, chairs, and a big, nice window. That's a house. <laughs> this is a house that That's a, a house. tree got up on. Somehow. A house that does not fear the flood? Yeah. Uh, it has a big, nice window that looks directly into my nice, uh, small window in my bathroom. It looks, oh. it looks in at just the right angle. Does it? For what? <laughs> Here's the question. Is this my problem? So far, I've treated it as theirs. Is... A bold, a bold stance. Healthy is I'm not making eye contact. You are an acceptable solution. That's from you looking at me here in row G. And the first thing I would say is you could treat it like their problem. It's still your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
when someone was done designing your house, and I'm like, you're going to put a window there, but then people can see into the bathroom. I'm like, yeah, but what are the odds? Ah, uh, shit, man. That's... I do like the tall window so we can all dream as we poop. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was out there like a bird. Uh, I, can't, I can't poop unless I wistfully watch a butterfly go by. Uh, you know this. And I think about what it would look like to be free. <laughs> I, so where do you want? So uh, where do you want the window? Uh, well, I need to see my wishing star when I'm sitting. <laughs> my special for my want song. I need to. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta be able to pray to the man in the moon, don't I? <laughs> Yo, this is bad. It's bad. Hey, cut one thing is curtains. For them or for you? Um, you were there first. Don't listen to him. It's again. It's your butt. You are. You have everything to lose. <laughs> it's there. It's just their eyes. It's just their eyes, and it's your butt. And it could be an attack. Like it's not good for you to have your butt. If they see that's curtains. That's metaphorically speaking. Okay. It's your butt is on the line. They they have nothing to lose. Um. You have to put up curtains. Can you? and wait for me to finish before you, like, chide me. Chainsaw, go to the tree, let me fucking finish. You cut it across, maybe in like the, the midsection of the tree. Kay. And then you go a few feet down and you make another clean cut. Karate kick that section you've just cut out. The tree falls down again, breaks the sight line to your toilet zone. I I'm okay with the tree dying after that, oh, okay. actually. Are you okay with the neighbor dying? No, absolutely okay. not. But then it would just become a shed at that point, right? If, if tree house, tree house, oh tree house no, 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 tree house fall down, become shed. But it doesn't fall down like clunk, 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 clunk. Okay. Tree house fall down like a Donkey Kong, become uh-huh. shed. Tree house am shed, it's true. Yeah. You could tell the neighbor if you don't if you don't get some curtains, I'm gonna spin kick that goddamn house at that tree. <laughs> and the thing is, nobody knows how hard anybody else can spin kick. <laughs> they they don't know if it's a hollow thread or not. You could be one of the rare people that can fly <laughs> off your roof, <laughs> jump off your roof, spin kick the house on the tree. I've never seen him spin kick before. He might <laughs> he might be able to. I don't know how hard he can spin kick. He ran kick. a half marathon last year. I don't know. Came in 29th. I have a Yahoo here that was sent in by Merritt Palmer. Thank, thank you, Merritt. God. It's uh, thank you, Merritt. It's Yahoo Answers user Catley who asks, "What happens when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles become adults? <laughs> Are they just mutant ninja turtles?" <laughs> you you never you always hear about the last three words in the title. N- is there anything about their whole shit that would change if they... I don't think of them as being between the ages of 13 and 19. They're gigantic, muscular, green monsters. And is it in turtle years? Who even knows at that point? They're two? Or they might be 200, because tortoises go, they go forever. A long time. Um, this is the argument that I would make. Once they are at a point... Uh, along their lifespan where they are no longer comfortable being called teenage. Well, for one, they may love it. I know that I would love if someone mistook me for a teenager. When I get carded? Yeah, so flattering. But they may not necessarily like any of it. Like, they may not want to be mutants or ninjas (laughs) or... I'm obviously not a turtle. How about this? How about instead of mutant ninja turtle, how about Donatello? How about, there's only four of us, we're all named after painters, fuck. Just learn our names and say like, Raphael, you are cool, but rude. That's easy to remember. And he would say, yeah, I have a lot to work on. Yeah, Yeah, I have been talking to somebody. Yeah, Uh, it's my struggle. Pizza, are you kidding me with my acid reflux? No thanks. (laughs) You know what I wish people would pour down the sewers more is bisque. Drop that in, down in the sewer, yes. A shredder, <laughs> shredder and the Foot Clan are terrorizing the city? 
call the police. Yeah. Just call the police. It's past nine o'clock. It's after nine o'clock. Are you kidding me? Survivor's back. What? <laughs> Survivor is back, by the way, tonight. Catch it. Um, I tell you so. who I feel bad for is the group that sings the theme song because you know it'll take them a bit. <laughs> There'll be a lot of like mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> it'll be uh, mutant P-I-N-G-O. ninja turtles. Teen. Damn it, Ryan! Oh, fuck. I just know the old way so good. <laughs> what can they replace? Two syllables. They need two syllables. I mean, adult, but that's not good. Adult. People who are doing their best. People who yeah. are doing their best. They are just people. Let's just accept them. Tur- turtle power. Fuck. Okay. Fuck. That still is good. We're gonna. Ne- yeah. It Do is. you think that it was it, that the name built as they got older, or that it was aspirational? That Splinter found them and said, "Someday you will be teenage mutant ninja turtles." What about after that? Uh, let's listen. <laughs> Three of you. <laughs> the sewers are terrible, and you fight a guy that's made of swords. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? But, uh, you, you should be pretty, honestly, you were raised to this point by a rat. You should be pretty fucking jized about getting to teenage. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad's a rat, okay? <laughs> hey. Hold on a second. Why do they wear masks? <laughs> Who is gonna be like <laughs> you? Who are those anonymous crusaders? <laughs> these, these, these I saw them at the market just the other day. No, couldn't be them. I'm I'm friends with four human turtles that have ninja skills, but they can't be you. <laughs> Not without the mask. <laughs> You're in a suit. You can't be. You can't be the brave crusaders. Here you are applying for a loan. Couldn't be you. <laughs> you ah, mu- nice to pick you up. Uh, the lift app says Donatello. So you, uh, yeah. Wait, you're almost ready. Your ninja training is complete. First, my students, I have to hide your identity. Um, like, the jig is up at this point. The ship has sailed. Uh, I had a Bigfoot encounter in high school. The problem is, now that I'm 30, I've noticed people start to get weird when I talk about it. Even when they brought up Bigfoot and how they believe in him. This happens a lot at the office. Is there... Is there any way not to uh, sound crazy when talking about my BFE? (laughs) Or should I retire this story? That's from Encountered in East Lewis County. Are you here? All right. Does the conversation... Is is Bigfoot here? (laughs) I thought it was worth checking. No, we're good. Is, does the conversation go like this? Like you overhear people talking at work like, yeah, Bigfoot, I saw him crush five cars. And you're like, yeah, I saw Bigfoot too. I walked around with him and gave him some beef jerky and he got real mad. Like, wait, hold wait, on. Wait, hold on, huh? Hold on. You didn't mean the monster truck, did you? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, they, listen, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but they, they tricked you into telling your Bigfoot story. <laughs> They pretended to believe in Bigfoot, so you would tell your Bigfoot story. You got catfished. You got Bigfushed. <laughs> it happens. But they tricked you into telling your story, which I'm sorry, but that's what happened. Is, is it possible that when you started telling your story and you're like, yeah, I met him. I met Bigfoot August 12th of 2001. And they were like, no way. I was with Big- Bigfoot. <laughs> August 12, 2001, and you were not there. Oh. Is there more than one Bigfoot? Yeah. All right, there's a, that's a consensus. Well, there's only one Bigfoot. There are many Sasquatches. <laughs> there aren't. And this, I think, is the heart of the problem. I don't think... I don't think... 
Maybe. It's not because you used to be a teen and it was adorable. Um, it's that it, when you were telling this story before, it was the aughts and everything was fucking chill. And everyone was, yeah, man, Obama's president? Maybe there's Bigfoots? I don't know. Anyway, that's so funny. That's kooky. Now it's 2018. If somebody's like, hey, there are Bigfoots, I feel like I have to be like, no, there aren't. There aren't Bigfoots. Stop it. Comf- You're embarrassing com- yourself. Stop. Comfort breeds whimsy. Comfort yes. breeds whimsy. I can't hide it out. You can say, stop it. There aren't. Move on. Next we're, thing. We're Truth dealing things. with Bigfoot Hook right now. Where in, yes, 1990, 2000, early 2000, we were young, Peter. But now we've gone on to be a lawyer. And we've forgotten what it is to believe. <laughs> and now we can't accept there's a Bigfoot because that means dreams come true. And as we all know, they do so not. We need, we need Bigfoot. We need Bigfoot. Bigfoot to come kick in the door of our British grandma's house. Yes. Where we are staying with our wife and children, and there's an estranged thing going on there. And then the Bigfoot just beats the shit out of us. Uh Uh-huh. It's been a while since I've seen Hook, but yes. He beats the shit out of us, and then he takes my glasses off, and he's like, there you are, Griffin. (laughs) He squishes my face for like 10 minutes. Yep. How he does. You remember how he does it? You want to do another Yahoo or should I do a question? I can do a Yahoo. This feels like a trap. Is it a trap? No. Uh, Okay. This is a a Yahoo that was sent in by Tim Hall. Thank you, Tim. (laughs) Oh, no. It's Yahoo Answers user Angela (laughs) who asks... You can't, if I get to the subject of the Yahoo, you're not allowed to jump in with one of your bits. I wouldn't jump in with any bits. Okay. Angela asks, why are human babies more foolish than most other animal babies? (laughs) Other animal babies like kittens, pups, etc. can survive even if they're orphaned or injured, but human babies are sure to die if they get no help. Why is that so when humans are actually more intelligent, parentheses, have the sixth sense, than other animals? But, hold on. My baby does have a bit of the telekinesis. (laughs) A baby wolf is still going to eat him up. This baby, yes, that baby... The baby wolf. Not even a contact. The baby, a, like baby a wolf fight ate, or a court case. Yeah. The baby will always Baby wolf lose. ate my psychic baby. Yep. <laughs> um, How come my human baby is so weak compared to the powerful horse baby? What? Giraffe? Land on feet. Walk, walk, walk. Yeah. Baby? Take like two years. Takes like a long, long, long time. I will also say I like that they use the word foolish in the subject line, which yes. I don't feel that's what they're going Not for. Not accurate. Ah, oh, you know how babies are so foolish and could be eaten by a wolf? Yeah, babies are always wilding out. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> you know those trickster babies you know who can't trickster fend for babies themselves? Always getting silly. Do you guys remember when the baby hippo Fiona was born? Yes. I remember it vividly, sir. And we all thought as a nation, that thing could really kick my baby's ass. <laughs> if, if there were 10 human babies versus one baby hippo Fiona, a hundred, e- how many would it take? One brave baby. That's why I've been training BB accordingly. Every day I show her a picture of Fiona and go, not today. Um, You don't know that the animal would eat the baby. Like, I think that all animals would, if I've learned anything from books, is that the animal would raise the baby. Yes. 100% of the time. 100% of the time, wild animal finds free baby. It's... Says sick, free baby. Sick. Oh, well, I'm not going to waste baby. this, they say. Eventually, he'll be able to explain to other humans to, like, not take, like, not colonize my land or whatever it is animals sure. do in, like, Tarzan books. Or and happy feet. Happy I think feet, that's the thing. Whatever. One the ex- penguins raise the baby. One exception, if I can jump in. Yeah. Do you remember the good joke that's like, I think 
Bingo ate my baby. Do you remember him? Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a scam because the dingo raised the baby to oh. a, to adulthood, but then was embarrassed <laughs> that he hadn't brought the baby back. He realized <laughs> <laughs> he realized that he should have, and then later Meryl Streep was like at Starbucks, and the person was like, "Anyway, do you want a drink?" Woof woof woof. And she was like, "You look like exactly like my baby's son." And the guy's like, no, I was raised by dingoes, actually. It's like, not, it's pretty chill. And she, so what you're saying is there's a circumstance in which someone came to where the baby had been and there were dingoes there. And they're like, hey, have you seen a baby? And they were like, no. Dingo ate your baby. Yeah, one of the dingoes ate the baby. And, when, and then the baby dingoes like, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they totally did. They did. Check out my whiskers. Anyway. I, wait, how old is this baby? Seven, he's 17 years old. Always be my baby. Yeah, dig away your baby or whatever. They let me watch MTV. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I get to have uh, uh, Dingo Mom uh, lets me have fruit roll ups basically whatever I want. <laughs> so I'm just going to stay with Dingo Mom. I haven't had to go to Driver's Ed in a while now. Yeah. So uh, I did not think that dumb Dingo ate your baby reference was going to give us so much material. <laughs> One could argue it didn't. Sure. <laughs> Sir Griffin, do you have any more yahoos? <laughs> Let him have this. Start another Yahoo group. <laughs> Say anything. The- <gasps> <laughs> I've got a Yahoo here that was sent in by... <laughs> No, stop it. Fuck me up. This is Munch Squad. It's a podcast within the podcast about the latest and greatest in fast food inventions. You guys know Dunkin' Donuts? No more. Ah, oh, sorry, they're closing all the Dunkin' Donuts. No, just oh. kidding. Are you for real? Nah, bud. They're changing the name <laughs> of Wait. it. And this is not when IHOP was like, we're IHOB, and everybody's like, uh, fuck off. Can we, brief, brief diversion, that was real, right? And everybody's like, hey, that's really bad. And they were like, uh, yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? J.K. Simmons, no. Um, Can I also just say, I also like the way that you started it, because it made me think, what if there was like a fast food agent who's like, you know what, we're done. Oh, are you going bankrupt? No, we're doing great, but you know what? You don't deserve us. <laughs> I was going to say, we've done everything we could think of. Yeah, yeah create can't think of any other weird donuts. Um, no, nah, this is, uh, this is, Dunkin' Donuts is no, no more. Welcome to the stage. Not to this stage, but the, sort of the world stage. Duncan. <laughs> All brands are so bad. Do y'all, y'all have Duncan here? So you don't have a fucking horse in this race. You don't give a shit. I wish, man, I wish I had a tiny piece of paper that I could like just write down what I think their explanation for the thing is. Feel it in an envelope and then yeah. open it back up when you're it's done you reading. The- in recognition, okay, so America runs on Duncan. That's the tagline. And uh, the, the, with customers around the world naturally and affectionately referring to the brand as Duncan, in recognition of this relationship as one of the many steps to transform itself into the premier beverage led on the go brand, the company today unveiled its new branding at its global franchisee convention. I bet that's a fucking party. <laughs> that officially recognizes its name as simply Duncan. 
So when, when it, it says beverage lead, is that bullshit? The cups just say D N K N on them now. It's a oh so, my god! It's like a fucking it's social so, network. In, in case the coffee is so delicious that you want to buy their stocks. Um, somebody probably does buy the stock of Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, the brand tested the new logo extensively, including on exterior signage at Dunkin' locations, featuring this next generation design concept over the past year. So let's check in with... I've never heard you so defeated by a munch squad before. Let's check in with Dunkin' brand CEO and Dunkin' U.S. President David Hoffman. Hi, I'm David Hoffman, and I'm the president of Dunkin'. <laughs> Damn, that is a good title, though. I bet this was his call, right? <laughs> I'm so good on the court. I want to be, you? yeah, I want to be the officially recognized as the president of Dunking. <laughs> Not Dunking, Dunkin. Our new branding is one of the many things we're doing as part of our blueprint for growth to modernize. You the- shrank it. You shrank the name. <laughs> To modernize the Dunkin' experience for our customers. From our next generation restaurants to our menu innovation, on-the-go ordering, and value offerings, all delivered at the speed of Dunkin'. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. We are, we believe, oh, this is good. We believe our efforts to transform Dunkin' while still embracing our incredible heritage. <laughs> You know, when they... <laughs> Stop! <laughs> what do you think that means? When they discovered the Dead Sea Donuts. <laughs> Remember our proud heritage of selling dough to people after we fried it? Do you, remember, <laughs> do you remember when we found that Dunkin' Donuts in a gas station last January and it was still called Dunkin' Donuts? What a proud heritage that was. <laughs> Do you think the CEO of the yo-yo company just is reading this going, wait, hold, hold on. Hey, hold on. Aren't we still Duncan? Aren't we Duncan? We're Duncan. Um, Are we Duncan? Fuck. Um, so they've, oh my God, the story. They are doing so much apologizing for this. Like, they know how bad it is. There's literally a segment on here of this, like, very long story. Probably the longest I've ever seen on QSR. Duncan to remain sweet. Uh, quick service restaurant, the publication for the. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Duncan to remain sweet on donuts. Huh. Although oh, the word God. donuts will no longer appear in the logo or branding, donuts will remain a significant focus of the brand as the number one retailer of donuts in America, selling more than 2.9 billion donuts. <laughs> Uh, along with local favorites, so guests know they will be able to find the top-selling donuts and fun seasonal varieties no matter which Dunkin' location they visit. So here's what I... I I see what they're going with, sort of, where they want to sell other things, so they want to change the name, and they want to expand the brand. I I think it's weird that they're like, what's the best way to sum up what we do? It's kind of like... The number one thing, more so than donuts, is we want to keep the proud tradition of taking one thing and putting it in a liquid. (laughs) The one thing that we want people to know that they're going to come in here and do is take a solid thing and put it in a wet thing (laughs) and then then consume the result of that action. (laughs) That is still a big part of our heritage and our brand. Sure. Also, Duncan... And that still sucks to say it like that. And the fact that I'm going to have to do it for the rest of my life bones me out in a huge way. You can't say, but we still love donuts, though, when you've just struck donuts from your name. When you've, like, erased the fact that you ever made donuts in your if entire the, life. If the old spaghetti factory was like, we're just the old factory now, but our spaghetti is still <laughs> But we dope. still love spaghetti. We're crazy about this spaghetti stuff. Focus. I just like this idea of like somewhere like the CEO who was like, well, we're number one in donuts, so we beat that. <laughs> we beat that. We now finished. what we haven't beaten is the moistening of dry things. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> oh, you cards. Boy, howdy, that was a lot of fun. Hey, baby, I hear the blues are calling. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. We didn't do, um, hey, we didn't do that at all during the show. And I, I, I just edited it and I felt like such a piece of shit. Because I didn't, we didn't do, and everybody needs that joke at a Seattle live show. Yeah. And we didn't fucking give it to them. And so they all left, with, you know, with blue, blue balls. <laughs> Quite all right. stylish. Quite stylish. So our first sponsor is Casper. Casper is wonderful. They make quality mattresses. Hey, baby, I hear the sleeper calling. Toss yeah. salad and scrambled sheets. Yeah, there is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. They are uh, really great mattresses. We have one in our guest room that uh, I've slept on a couple times. We Every time we have guests in town, they, they sleep over. And uh, we always get just rave reviews. Uh, their mattresses combine multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with the right amount of sink and the right amount of bounce. And you can be sure of their purchase, uh, your purchase rather, with a 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. So get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash my brother. Use the promo code my brother at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Our uh, next sponsor this week is Wink. Hey, baby, I hear the booze are calling. Toss okay. bottles and scrambled grapes. Okay. <laughs> Wine is basically scrambled grapes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Griffin, you done gave it away. It's wine, folks. This is a wine one that we're talking about. Wink, uh, you tell Wink what you like. And uh, the kind of flavors you enjoy. You don't have to pick out varieties of wine or specific orchards. What, Wink will just take your choices, your flavor preferences, and they're going to uh, uh, create a great box of wine. Not box wine, but a box of wines uh, just for you. Uh, uh, the, I, I think you're really going to enjoy it. And it's all from Wink, W I. In C. Each month there are new delicious wines. There's a really popular summer water rose, mm. uh, which is, of course, is red and white mo- wines mixed together mm. in one bottle. There are uh, no membership fees. And if you don't like a bottle they send you, they'll replace it. No questions asked. Discover great wine today. Go to trywink.com slash my brother. Or you can also go to trystink.com. It redirects to there. Boy, I, I can't why. believe we're still pushing that, huh? You get twenty dollars off your first shipment. That's t r y w i n c dot com slash my brother for twenty dollars off. That's trywink dot com slash my brother. Got a jumbotron here. This one's for Shane from Caitlin, who says to Shane, "Happiest of birthdays to the love of my life." And the sunshine of my everyday. I can't wait for all the things 24 will hold for you. Ah, uh, man, I heard the new season's going to be so tight. Jack's back. And this time he's got three guns. Uh, here's <laughs> to the first of a lifetime of birthdays together because you're the plan. I love you, your cute face, and your cute butt. That is all. Namaste. P.S. We're dogs now, and I can't stress that enough. Bow wow for now. Um... I don't even want to say when they wanted this have birthday message, but we uh, we fucked up. But um, don't focus on that. Focus on the really good twenty four bit that was in there because yeah, um, that Jack's was ever, ba- that's what that's what people are, are going to leave. And uh, Jack, talking about. Uh, yeah, it's Jack's back. Jack's, 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 Jack's back. back. Jack's, Jack's back, back, baby. Jack's back, baby. On this one, uh, I got a message for Love Bug, and it's from Sweet, and it says, "Hey, Love Bug, it's Sweet. I wanted to say that I love you. You're so dang cute." And I can't wait to see you again. I hope this sweet message read by some of our favorite brothers brings a smile to your face next to Bill. That is very cute and beautiful. But I um, I am now obsessed with the idea that uh, across the nation, uh, hundreds, perhaps thousands of lovers just looked at their partner and said, oh, yeah, that was oh, yeah. me. <laughs> that was me for you. <laughs> that one for, for sure. you. That is for you. Um, I also love how it says some of our favorite brothers reflecting the fact Travis is not here um, because of the parachute accident. I miss Travis so much. And folks, please don't try to eat an entire parachute. 
It's bad for you. It's uh, bad for your body, your human body. I can't wait to get back to this fucking show. Yeah, for sure. I, before that, though, thank you to everybody who came out to our shows in the Pacific Northwest. It was super, super fun. We had a really, really good time uh, on tour this time. And um, Hey, baby, I hear the fans are calling. Toss uh, sick it. And st- <laughs> Let me try again. Oh, yeah. Hey, baby, I hear the fans are calling. Mm. Toss tickets and scrambled bits because we do different bits. Yeah, we do. Uh... I'm bailiff Jesse Thorne, and justice is within your reach. My mom refuses to take my phone calls. My boyfriend says I should take our cats with me to graduate school, but I think he should keep them. In the court of Judge John Hodgman, justice rules. My partner's board game collection is out of control. My sister won't stop stealing my clothes. I'm Judge John Hodgman. I'm tough, but fair. fair. I'll bring you justice, and I'm only a click away. Tipping. Automotive etiquette. Siblings. Roommates. If you've got a case, go to MaximumFun.org slash JJHO. Judge John Hodgman is tough, but fair. fair. Subscribe to the podcast today. Judge John Hodgman rules. That is all. Um, I want to do a Yahoo it's sent in by everyone, and it's not like, if, seriously, I got this from like 30 different people. I don't know that it's going to be the richest like conversation vein for me, but it has 82 answers, which is by far the most I've ever seen on a Yahoo before. I want to explore some of them. Uh, thank you for sending this in. It was, uh, it's an anonymous Yahoo user. Uh, I'm going to call them... Um, Duncan asks... <laughs> Duncan asks, how are you able to be on Yahoo every morning and not work for a living? Now, that is, of course, that's an email that Griffin gets daily. It took me a bit to decipher this question, whether it was saying, this website is so delectable. I sit down at my desk at work, boot it up on my computer. Oh, no, it's five o'clock. I've been on Yahoo all day looking at all of my great friends telling great answers to each other. But the other side of this is like, how can you be on Yahoo and not be inspired to have a job? I think, or how do you all have time must be because you're unemployed. Any of them are bad. Yeah. Let's start digging in. Uh, an anonymous Yahoo user top answer says, because poking fun at this shit show of a liberal circle jerk is my job. <laughs> I'm Damien Yahoo! <laughs> Jake McClake says, not every morning, but many. I'm on sick leave because of an operation and blood clots. <laughs> Ret- retired old Sarge. <laughs> Retired old Sarge says, because I was military for almost 33 years and I was smart enough to start my own business and hire people who I can trust to be there and take care of it for me. What? I built a successful small business where I could hire trustworthy people so I could be on this fucking tasty website. (laughs) Back in 1970, I started my own business because I knew one day I'd want to be on Yahoo all the time. Can we go back to the person who said this is their job? (laughs) Because... How far does that get you on, like... That was Griffin. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that is Griffin. (laughs) Uh, Yahoo Answers B says, Okay, Yahoo Police. (laughs) This person is your boss. Like, the person's not trying to narc on you. They're just making conversation. Yahoo Answers user E says, It's not the morning everywhere. Time zones, bruh. What? I only get on this website at 3 p.m. Jeffrey says, I'm happily retired. And there's Jeffrey's picture, so, like, you know he's legit. (laughs) Y'all can't enjoy that, but it's good. (laughs) A lot of people are retired. Uh, I broke a few bones, got shot a few times, just a few bad days at my office, and I do it again. Also, my vi- I love this one, too, because there are people who don't understand, like, you can post something and then see it hours later. Someone responded, yeah. newsflash, it's the afternoon. 
Uh, EIEIO says, I am largely retired, except for some board of directors work in investment management. No, it's not true. What that was was a lie you said. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Somebody said, I, lots of people on here still work. Yeah, okay. okay. Just in time says, I run heavy equipment, go to work at 7 a.m. Yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> I don't even comprehend this question. <laughs> All right, we're we're running short on time. We should do the audience questions. Yes, we questions. have audience questions. The way we do this now, please don't move a muscle. There are asps everywhere. Under each of your seat is it one discreet asp. Uh, we have... Uh, some of them lazier than others. Yeah. We have some uh, submissions that people sent in. We uh, got some just sort of one-sentence briefings. We're going to call out names and seat numbers, and then you're going to come up to these microphones. Can we get house lights turned up, please? I don't know who I'm looking at. Paul, please. Paul. Yeah. Paul. Can we turn boy lights down a little bit? Ooh. Hey. Uh, hey, what's up? Over there. Uh, Hey. Hey, uh, what's your name? Uh, Sam. Hi, I, Sam. I use they, them pronouns. Thank you, Hello, Sam. Hello, um, Sam. And um, my question is, um, well, so um, <laughs> on the way here to get to my car, I, um, I walked through a giant spider web. Mm -hmm. um, were, not were you for the home, first time. Were you home right now? I was trying to do a fucking no doubt joke, but it didn't come to me in time, and I <laughs> apologize. Can we get the audience mic turned up a, a little bit so we can hear Sam better? Thank you. Sorry. Oh, no. So, um, so I, to get into my car, my car is often like surrounded by spider webs, and usually I'm pretty good. <laughs> um, but sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> Can we break down that soon? Yeah. Just hold on. Hold on. on. Why, Sam? Why? Sam, and is it, how, yeah, what are like you an, good at? What's, are you in yeah. the forbidden forest? <laughs> is it like an incommensurate amount of spider webs compared with like other cars near your car? Or yes. do you just only work one day every thousand years? No, it's, um, Anyway, I disappear like Brigadoon, and, um... Uh, no, it's like, it's like a parking spot and an assigned spot, and, like, there's, like, a pole next to it, so spiders will, like, just... Die, the driver's they side love door it. They'll just... strip on it. Is it a yeah. sign... Yeah. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Gross. Is it an assigned parking... Okay. Yes, I cannot escape. I've tried. Um, no, so, today, to get here, after work, I, uh went to my car and walked right into the biggest one I've ever seen and people started laughing um, because apparently a family had been like watching from their apartment and I heard one of them say she walked right into it and That's so, wow. so I'm just wondering like can I pull it off somehow or is there something <laughs> the I can spider do web? to like, mitigate everything about that um, um maybe it's you... like um, um, um. yeah like cotton candy <laughs> That's where my mind immediately went. To um, eating it? To eating yeah. the web? To make it look like this is where I left my cotton candy yesterday and I'm just picking it up. That's good. Um, no matter what move you do to, like, like to react to the web, if you come up snapping, <laughs> it's going to look very like you were starting a dance in a bad way, but then you're, like, back with it. You know? Maybe as you run into the spider web, you just loudly announce, I'm helping him move. Yeah. Come with me. What I did is I, I backed up and I looked at the spider and I said, Oh, sorry. And really good. I, that's great. That was really nice. Right. Did, do you have an ongoing relationship with this spider? It's, it's hard to say. They all look alike. Do they? Right. Do they whoa, 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 hey. Whoa, okay. Sam. Whoa, Does, Sam. Whoa. Does the spider ever leave messages like some Jetta? <laughs> um, you could start carrying devil sticks with you to your car, and then before you get in, just give it a quick like, and that'll usually clear it out, and you look super fucking cool doing it. So cool. So cool. Um, that's like nine really good suggestions. Does that help? Does that Thank help? You. Thank you so Thank much, you, Sam. Sam. Thank you. Um, Hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. This is my question. Sure. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> I like that gentle lead in. <laughs> in case you didn't know. Uh -huh. um, so I know that some or all of you have had GI issues, and my question's really Not to me. That. <laughs> um, 
So my husband seems to be developing a problem with dairy. He loves pizza, and it destroys him. Sure. We have a two-year-old, and when I come home with a two-year-old and I say, go find daddy, the first place she looks is the bathroom. Kids do the most hurtful things. (laughs) Kids do the truest things. To avoid any possible future embarrassments, what can I do to pizza? to make my husband, pizza lover, never want it again. Oh. (laughs) Okay, one, wait, hold on, sorry, most important question. Is your husband here? Maybe. (laughs) I saw a hand go up! up. I appreciate you wanting to give him agency and putting himself on blast in that moment. That was very kind of you. But before you said maybe I watched hand go, like a super excited, like, that's me! Yeah. Yeah. Pizza mistake person. <laughs> Jessica, I... I gave him fair warning. Okay. I guess I was kind of hoping your question would end with, so what are some great, fun, time-tested, dairy-free recipes for pizza? <laughs> but your those. question was, how do I ruin pizza? <laughs> Which is, I guess, another approach <laughs> to it. And, and also, you did phrase it not like, how do I ruin a pizza I make for my husband, but rather, how do concept. I ruin pizza? Oh, the concept oh, pizza. of pizza. Do you ever see... Hey, hey, y'all ever seen that video? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new segment on the Bim Bam. Hey, y'all see that video, and it's like a security camera, and it's the pizza delivery person, and the pizza falls out of the box, and you really quickly scoop it back up and put it in the box <laughs> to give it? What if we opened a chain of pizza restaurants that did that 100% of the time? And it was specifically catered to people whose partners had lactose intolerance for some sort of GI issue, but still loved the pizza. But they won't after they see what we do to it. There have to be pizzas without cheese on it, right? You gotta be able to make a pizza without cheese. I mean, cheese. diet cheese is legit, but that's not funny. All right. There's so many options, um, but you want to hurt pizza, and so that's where we are. Have you? Oh, okay. you got to eat it all in front of your husband. Sorry, go on. Pizza the Hut, space ball. It's too scary. <laughs> Very disgusting. Made of pizza. A man of pizza? No, thank you. I can't eat pizza again. I hate it. And he'll order out for you, <laughs> which I still don't know what that means. Was that kind of a fun Spaceballs yeah. reference? Okay. It um, seemed like it went over super good. <laughs> um, but now we know next time you want to make a Spaceballs reference to put it right back in your pocket. <laughs> it's good. We have to trot those out because I didn't know and I was curious. Yeah, I had 18 throughout the course of this episode and I thought I didn't know and then you tested the waters and I appreciate that. Um, you can't... I. Jessica, I don't know you that well. You're not powerful enough to ruin pizza. (laughs) None of us are. I'm not. They're not. None of us are. But maybe if we all work together. To ruin pizza. Everybody clap your hands to kill pizza forever. Hey, y'all. Why are you clapping? It's forever. We don't have much left. This... A rat got famous for dragging it. And that fucking afternoon, all of America was still like, I'll have a pizza. I'll, I'll take I'll one have, pizza. I'll have what the rat's having. <laughs> For sure. And you know what? I'm willing to bet sales went up. Jacked yeah. through the roof. That rat made people hungry for pizza, but <laughs> you're going to destroy pizza. Doubt it. <laughs> some mutant ninja turtles hey, made pizza Paul, cool. can we get some pizza out of here or yeah, what? Yeah, I know. I'm dying for it. Uh, does that help? Probably not, because we went pretty aggro on you. <laughs> uh, no, but thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, and then let's get one more lined up CJ Mezzanine 34 Row X Seat 9 
Uh, and Jazz, Jazz, hello, Jazz. Hello. How's it going? How's it going? It, it's going all right. I'm having a good time. Go good. good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Glad you're here. What's up? Uh, this is a question about my great grandmother Dolores. Awesome. Okay. And her oh, relation- thank you for clarifying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and her relationship with Ryan Styles. Okay. It's, for, with it's, a, it's not sexual. With oh shit. <laughs> with a Ryan Styles or with whose line is it anyways? Ryan Styles. That's the tall, funny one. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they both live up in Bellingham. <laughs> um, and she used to be Ryan Stiles' neighbor. Um, and we used to go over on 4th of July. He would go whole hog. Um, you buy a whole pig and roast it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, ooh, I bet she has some stories, but it sounds like she actually has some pretty good Ryan Stiles <laughs> stories. Um, and... Just one year, we stopped going, and I I asked Grandma, and she was like, well, me and Ryan kind of had a falling out. (laughs) Oh, no. But... (laughs) Tell me everything. (laughs) That's the thing, is she kind of refuses to go into it. Like, I think it was really bad. So it's her fault. It's probably her fault. Because I have to say, if it was Ryan's fault, she'd tell you. Yeah. (laughs) You gotta force her. Hey, Dolores, guess whose line it is? It's yours. (laughs) Hey, hey, Dolores, I got a question for you. Whose lie is it anyway? Hmm. Interesting. One more. (laughs) What? One more. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Grandma, you've made a Colin mockery out of your relationship. With Ryan Styles. It's so good. What a talent. It's an honor to share the stage. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to... Thank you. That's a, I'm, I'm done Drew carrying the show. I'm going to pass it back to my brothers. You yeah, can't for just, sure. Sorry, you can't just <laughs> yell, Greg, proops at me. Okay, sorry, Jess. So give me... Literally all details available about your grandma's relationship with Ryan Styles. Go. How close were they before? <laughs> How close are they now? And what happened as far as you can piece together? She was a lot closer with uh, Ryan's wife, Pat. Okay. Um, Damn, Pat Styles is a good name, though. <laughs> oh shit! Is it good? Pat Styles. It hits me a... so much better than Ryan Styles <laughs> yeah. does. Pat Styles is dope as okay. hell, anyway. <laughs> Um, but, but she's, you know, she's 91, right. but she's kind of a party animal. Like every time I'm up there, she's always got the crown royal out. Like, hell yeah. Good grandma. <laughs> she's good. She's choice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she's here tonight. <laughs> it just feels like Ryan, did, it's not Ryan's fault, but I also feel like by the time you hit 91, can you really hold a grudge against a 91-year-old? I'm confused as to how this beef came about. I kind of feel like she just got pretty salty that he didn't, like, invite her to a party or something. Because that sounds like really something... a small slight. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, but, like, he'll still run into her, like, in Bellingham and be like, D, we can't keep meeting like this. Oh, <laughs> All right, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Have we gotten into fan fiction territory? (laughs) No, it was her birthday in August, and I, like, brought it up again just to see, like, if she could tell me anything else about it. And she was like, I'm still mad at Ryan Stiles. (laughs) Okay, Okay, wait, 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 wait. This is just one thought. Do you have... A twin that Ryan Stiles is the grandmother of, because maybe you two could switch places. Oh, and then they would have to get back together. Ah, uh-huh. kind of. Uh, what that is that? Do you? I'm I'm an only child. Okay. As far as you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. She didn't actually know in that movie until she found out. Nothing and, we say is legally binding. Oh, you, don't say what you're about to say, bud. 
You need to put Ryan Stiles in a life-threatening situation where your grandma... <laughs> Does that help, Jazz? Has to rescue Does that help? him. Just say yes. You can't thing. let Travis go on. No, you have, your, then your grandma rescues Ryan Stiles and they're friends again. Okay, thank you. Jazz, does that help? <laughs> Just so pretend much. it helps. So thank much. you, Jazz. Uh, RJ. Hey, what's up? Thank you for buying a poster, RJ. If you'd like one of your very own, if you've got great taste like RJ... You can uh, pick them up out in the lobby. Let's see those posters. Who's got posters? Oh, thank that you. That is not enough of you. Everybody needs them. It should look like a snowbank out there. Uh, With all the posters. Buy two. What is your question? That was so fucking gross. What just happened on the stage? I just want everybody to buy a poster. They're nice posters. Hey, what's up? Uh, so somebody from my college got uh, signed by a British hockey team. <laughs> And in their press release, they're like, hey, we don't have a lot of money. If you buy the jersey for us, we'll give it to you at the end of the season. I was like, yeah, sure. After it got stinked on? (laughs) I mean, I I hope they clean it. I think they have washers in England. Okay. (laughs) Okay. They have a fun name for it, though, like... Clo- washers. Like, like, uh, like, uh, clothing loo. Or like scrub a dubbers. All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, but then they email me back and say, all right, so what do you want on the jersey? And I don't have like a business or anything that I can advertise. <laughs> Even if you did. <laughs> Even if you did. Come, come to my Seattle-based um, haberdashery. <laughs> or what if it just said on the front, RJ's? Ooh. Yeah. It's, I'm assuming you're asking us what to put on the fucking jerseys, yeah. okay. Or it just said, mine. Ooh. <laughs> That's definitely a joke from Talladega Nights, so we're getting somewhere. It works for them. <laughs> what about... What about basketball? <laughs> what if you did... I mean, what would you do if you saw a hockey jersey and it said <laughs> basketball? Oh, referee. <laughs> That's really good. Black and white pinstripes like a goal, like a referee for hockey wears, and then you can blend in stealth, make it like ice colored, and the pants too. They'll never see you coming, which is probably extremely bad for hockey. <laughs> um, Duncan is good. Duncan's good. <laughs> Sure. This, this is one that's just fun for the announcers. Each one has a different player's last name on the front. So it's like, if it's like, uh, I don't know, Stevens, it says Johnson on the front, and they'll I be like, uh, Johnson, wait, no, fuck. Uh, no, wait, Johnson has Stevens. Shit, hold on. <laughs> hey, how about a bunch of, like, bubble wrap? Because it's dangerous. <laughs> RJ, do you have any favorite Bible verses? <laughs> That's something I, um, I wanted to ask you to talk about why I try to come up with an answer for your question. So we could chat about it. Do you have any gut feel? Like, what are you actually going to do when you ignore yeah. all the what bullshit did you, What did you do? actually do two weeks ago? Uh, I was thinking of just putting my Twitter handle for, like, the internet clout. Fuck, that's so much that's better! That's really better than way anything better than said. any of us. But in your defense, you had way longer to think about it than we did. Ooh, okay, I'll top that. Your PayPal link. <laughs> and maybe on the bottom it says, like, this was a mistake. And they're like, no, it wasn't. Five dollars. Does that help? Yeah, cool. You. Cool, thank thanks. You. Just happy to be here. That's hard, Jay. That was an easy one. Hello, CJ? Oh, yes, yeah, CJ. Fantastic. Hi. Hey. Um, so... My grandparents have a big ranch. And a lot of grandparent-based queries yeah. this episode. I know. I was worried. Grandparents, CJ, RJ. Um. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, so they have a big ranch, and the county has told them that they're just going to build a road through the middle of it. Eminent domain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's bad. I mean, we're yeah. not leaving here tonight until we fix it. Sit yeah. in. Sit. Everybody, chain yourselves to your seats. <laughs> We do need to leave, though, because we have we another will, show Yeah, tomorrow. we'll be headed yeah. out after the show, but you all hang in there. And you're the real heroes. And we're with you in spirit. Sorry. 
Uh, well, the consolation prize is that they get to name the road. Oh, okay. Uh, and my grandparents have asked uh, me and my brother and sister, what, what should we name our road? Because their only idea was um, Rabbit Road, because they own rabbits. That's fine. Just what kidding. about Route 66? <laughs> That's fine. That's good. What about um, uh, Fuck This Local Government Boulevard? <laughs> I don't know if they'll let you say fuck on a street sign, though. Probably not. Probably not. Do you have any favorite Bible verses? Uh, There is another road down the street that is named uh, Matthew's some number. I don't know. So it's like already been taken by someone else. What if the... Wait. What if if it... Wait. (laughs) Are you fucking with me right now? Are you telling me that I am suggesting Bible verse and you're like, no, the people next door actually did Bible verse. So... Montana has very lax laws about what you can name roads. Okay. So So maybe fuck the local government boulevard. (laughs) It's not bad. What about stop road? Oh, shit. Or, or a 90 mile an hour road can be super fun. Street Road Avenue. How do your grandparents feel about mojis? Uh, my, gra- my grandpa loves emojis and yes. he is very active on Snapchat. Oh, what's so- his. Get oh, that hey. handle out. Let's everybody follow your grandpa tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need actually that grandpa's handle. <laughs> Let me get that, uh, hey, give me that grandpa handle real quick. (laughs) Just into the microphone is fine. (laughs) Yes, pull out your phone. Look at it. I saw you. Yes. Take the time. (laughs) Everybody else, I don't know how to access Snapchat, but we're all going to follow this grandpa tonight. Get your phones out. Get your phones out. Follow this grandpa. Definitely make it a Snapchat handle. Avenue is extremely good. All right, so to um, give a little bit of context for this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I am trusting you to use your best judgment as to whether or not you should go sit down right now. I actually am not his friend on Snapchat because I don't want to know what he does. You should go sit. Thank you. Thank you so much, CJ. We have to protect you and ourselves and maybe your grandpa from this. And maybe the U.S. Yes. Does that help? A little bit. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. All right. Hey, everybody. Folks, that's going to do it for our show. We will be here. Turn the uh, the old house lights. Bring that house lights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Um. Thank you so much to the Paramount for yes, having us. Yes, this theater is absolutely incredible. Thank you, Paramount. Uh, thank you to John Roderick again. That was Amazing. so fucking... So cool. We have, been, we have been fans of his music for so long, and it's so cool that like not only do we like get to know him, but that he like has played for two of our amazing. shows now is the He's fucking coolest dude. shit. It, unimaginably cool. Uh, thanks to our daddy uh, for helping us. Thank you to Sawbones. Go pre-order the Sawbones book right now. How can people pre-order the Sawbones book? Bit.ly forward slash the Sawbones book. I have a copy. It's fantastic. And I hate books. (laughs) Thank you to uh, Seattle, I believe it's called, for having us. Um, Thank you to our various family members without whom we would not be able to be here tonight. Yes. They are backstage or they are at a home. Um, thank you, Max Fun. Max yes, thank fun. you, Max org. Fun. We uh, thank will be. Do we thank Paul? Oh, thank Paul. you to Paul. Paul. Oh, Paul. Um, we are not going to be hanging out after the show because I've been up for a really ridiculous amount of time. And uh, five a.m. for me, kids. Time zones are no joke. Um, Daughters, but don't we know. will be here tomorrow for Taz, and I hope the folks who got tickets to that are going to have a good time. Um, here's a there are the posters out in the lobby. Posters in the lobby, yes. Okay, Sarah final... Grayley designed those. Thank you, Sarah. They're beautiful posters. Here's the final Yahoo. It's sent in by Jack Bannon. Thank you, Jack. It's Yahoo Answers user Theo who asks, 
Um, I accidentally ate the do not eat packet inside my shoe box. Am I gonna die? <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, may kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Is there a dog in a car at a bar on the street? Yay! I'm Allegra Ringo, a small dog owner. My dog Pistachio howls when she's excited. And I'm Renee Culvert, a big dog owner. My dog Tugboat tips over when he's sleepy. And we co-host a podcast called Can I Pet Your Dog that airs every Tuesday. We bring you all things dog. Yes, dog news, dog tech, dogs we met this week. We also have pretty famous guests on butt legs. We're not going to let them talk about their projects. No. Just want to hear about those dogs. We don't want to hear about your stuff, only your dogs. So join us every Tuesday on Max Fun. 